What is up, everyone? Um, doing something new, again, because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with this channel still. I'm just doing whatever makes me happy, I guess. So, I was looking at some anime reviews. Suki, come on, you're, you're moving the camera around. I was looking at some anime reviews online and realized that a lot of the ones that I really enjoyed don't have a lot as far as like a community goes or just people even talking about it because I don't have many friends that watch anime so I'm not really stuck being told like oh you should watch this it's just coming out or um how have you not seen this one yet I just kind of look things up and I'm like that sounds interesting I want to watch that one of my most favorite animes ever is called Akagi it's a mahjong gambling anime pretty simple um but it, it just, it does it for me. I think it's fantastic. So, with that, I'm gonna do like a little intro video thing where I'm gonna show some clips of the show with a little voiceover, I guess. And we're just, we're gonna see how that goes. And then once that's done, probably like just three, four minutes of that, we'll come back here and I will talk about well, I guess why it stuck with me for so long and something, whatever doesn't involve needing a script to, to properly explain the setting because yeah, you'll, you'll see. It's, it's going to be great. It's going to, it's going to be fucking great. Can I get up now? Yeah. Please. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Akagi is the story of how a loner, 13-year-old kid becomes the most legendary gambler in the underground. Within the first night of him ever playing Mahjong, he reveals the true essence of gambling, the will to win instead of the want to survive. He's driven off a cliff to win a game of chicken, gambled for the right to an alibi, and even conned the Yakuza for good measure. This is before the guy even knows how to, any of the rules to Mahjong. So how does he celebrate his first big win in the underground? By requesting to double down and play until someone has to die. This is the reality Akagi lives in. Money is nothing but a way for people to hide and feel safe. So to show them the truths of the world, he plays any possible mind game or parlor trick in order to come out ahead, always pushing forward and being sure of himself. After his first night, Akagi feels robbed of the experience of a true gamble. He wants a true fight to the death. Luckily, a corrupt cop was witness to the happenings and sets up another match. Akagi agrees to go to the next match and win some money for the cop and the man he played his proxy for previously on one condition. He sets up a meeting with the Yakuza family he'll be facing the day before the match. What he wanted before agreeing to the match was a gun to settle a score with the kids he played chicken against. During this exchange, he notices a blind man and calls him out as his next challenger. This is when the blind man Ichikawa shows up. To test the guts of Ichikawa and to see if he's truly willing to risk his life, Akagi points his new five-shooter and has one bullet loaded. It's a little impromptu game of Russian roulette. Ichikawa doesn't even flinch as the trigger is pulled. Instead, he turns the tables immediately and explains it's only fair he has the chance to fire at Akagi as well also firing nothing in the process. This same ideal is used later that night when Akagi meets his chicken rival's friends. He gets beaten to a pulp, not once hitting them back, until it's apparent they're willing to truly beat the life out of him. He explains to them, much like Ichikawa had just done, that it's only fair their lives to be put on the line as well. Unfortunately for them, his gun was fully loaded this time. He may not have actually killed them, but they are wounded, and Akagi goes through this internal struggle of recognizing that they weren't truly in it for that, and that it's all just fakeness after fakeness. Quickly, he heads back to the match against Ichikawa with the hopes that maybe he'll follow the ideals that he had just instilled into him. The match becomes a game of wits immediately. Although they both get good draws and hands, the game seems to be going nowhere. So in true Akagi fashion, he has to split the funds in half, making it a sudden death match. 
When denied, he just cheats against the blind man, forcing home the point that he's going to get it his way, no matter what. The terms are agreed upon, and the true fight begins. Akagi's mental prowess in this match leads to the true birth of a legend, and after his victory, he disappears for six years, only to resurface after an imposter using his namesake is called out for being lackluster in comparison to what the others had seen six years prior. Bringing Akagi back into the limelight causes him to challenge stronger foes, make more life-threatening bets, and climb to the top until he can finally take part in the truest form of gambling, the gamble of life or death. And we're back. All right, so what makes this show so fantastic? Um, I think it's really just with each match you get a nice little tidbit that shows who Akagi is, just a little bit more and a little bit more. The very first one, it's, you know, gambling is just the will to win instead of the want to survive, as I previously said. Um, it's all about, like, you know, if you're gonna die, you're gonna die, you just have to fucking keep going at it. And then in the second match that he has, it's no longer about that, it's about the the honesty and he, he adapts that that equivalent exchange you know where if you're willing to give up something then I have to be willing to get up give up something back and forth but as time goes on it becomes more and more apparent that he's really just he wants that that full-on confrontation of I am putting my life on the line so you have to put your life on the line and it doesn't come to fruition so when he, after he disappeared for, for six months and he gets called back, he just gets thrown right back into that same world. But fortunately, he'd grown up a little bit. He, you know, six years later, so that would make him what? 19? Eh, this is older. <laughs> He's got some maturity on him. So thanks to that, you wanna come back up? Thanks to that, he is now learning that Maybe times have changed and he can't just put someone's life directly on the line, but people's money is now their livelihood. If he really wants to hurt someone, make them either owe a lot of money or lose a lot of money, and their life has been ruined. So the next match is exactly that. And now he's introducing the other idea of why would I care about this? because he just gets drawn in to fix a match that was messed up by the fake Akagi. So when he's in that match, he first has some random kid basically play for him instead that has no idea of the kind of money that's put on the line or anything like that. He's just playing to have a fun time and he's doing great. The second he finds out about the money is when the issue comes in. And he's like, there's no way that I can play for that amount of money. So Akagi fortunately steps in and he explains, why does it matter? It's not your money. You're not losing anything out of this. But my opponent, he's the representative for this family. If he loses, it all comes falling down on him. And a rule was introduced in this game where every single time that you finish a session and a victor hasn't come out, then you have to play again and stakes are doubled. Now, not you put down the same amount, so you know, 2,000, the next game would be 4,000 and then 6,000. No, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000, 16,000, 32,000. It's doubled every single time. So that's just the way that they have to deal with it. Um, and Akagi uses that to his advantage. He's like, it doesn't matter if I win. I just have to keep not losing. But every single time that a game continues, you're risking that much more money every single time. So he's once again just reversing the psychological warfare of the game and just throwing it on the other person. It's such a fantastically done show. And once you get to the final arc where it's him up against Washizu, they're playing a, a completely new form of Mahjong called Washizu Mahjong. It's just spectacular. It's 
you don't know if it's really a battle between good and evil. Because at the end of the day, I've watched this thing probably 13, 14 times now. I don't think you're supposed to like Ak Akagi. Like, you like him as a character, but I don't think you're supposed to actually consider him, like, as a good person. He's not doing it for any, like, altruistic reasoning or anything like that. He's literally just doing it because he wants to be a part of that. He wants to experience that kind of a gamble. In fact, when he disappears and they go and find him again, um, he's gambling, playing dice with the Yakuza, and he gets a good roll, and they try to brute force him into lying and saying that he lost the round, and he continuously says, no, I didn't, no, I didn't, until they start actually threatening him and eventually cutting him with samurai swords. And he still just flat out refuses to lie. I, again, I don't know if you're supposed to like him. I think he's a great character, but not a good person. And unfortunately, you don't know what happens at the end, at least not in the anime. The manga, the Washizu's arc, arc itself went on for like a decade, maybe longer. I, I honestly can't give the exact number, but it that arc itself went on for so long. So that's Akagi. It's a great show. Um, hopefully I don't spoil too much, but at the same time, since the ending's kind of on a cliffhanger, I don't feel too bad about it, but hopefully I was able to share something with you and you can go, you know what? That actually sounds really good. I want to see how he outsmarts these people. If you liked Death Note, then you'll like the mind games in this. I hated Death Note, but that's for another video. Akagi is a great show. Give it a watch. And we'll see what I decide to talk about next time. We'll probably do this like as a monthly thing. I'll just throw up another anime that... I feel like not many people give the appreciation it deserves, so. Peace out, everyone. I'm gonna fucking call it a night, because it is almost 2 a.m. and I got work in the morning. Go me. Peace.